Everyone, what's up? This is Jonathan Miller with Big Time Closers. In today's live cold calling videos, you're going to watch hands on what it takes and what to do to make a prospect go from saying no a billion times over and over to finally saying yes. But look, before we continue with this absolutely amazing content, do me a favor, quickly like and subscribe below. And again, for all of you that don't know, I worked with Wall Street firms for nearly 15 years, cold calling, selling products to businesses all over the world. So in this live cold calling video, you're gonna see all of that all in one. Also, for anyone looking for a live one-on-one -on -one sales coaching or group coaching, contact us right here, info at bigtimecloser.com. We can work with you on everything you need to learn from cold calling to closing deals, everything that we've learned on Wall Street for 15 years, all condensed in this one-on-one -on -one course, I promise is gonna make a huge difference in making sales. So again, before we get started, this video, this live video is of a prospect saying no over and over. He sounded so certain he wouldn't do any business and eventually gave in and said yes. So stay tuned all the way to the very end because I'm gonna recap and go over exactly why I did what I did, what I should have done better, and ultimately what led him to say yes. I'm not in a position right now to buy anything. Mm -hmm. And look, Tom, the only reason I'm calling Okay. The last time we spoke, I, I'm not uh, sure if you sorry, remember. Do Does that one ring a bell or not really? Yeah, I, I, my memory's a second short of something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal. Look, just to give you the heads up, it was that's not too bad, right? Not bad. Yeah, not at all. And look, the only reason I'm calling right this second, you work with me on something this small, I'm not going to change your life. I know you hear, uh, you know, promises left and right, but when I'm exactly right on this one, just have an open air for bigger business when you're more liquid down the road. Okay? I just, I just don't have any capital to invest, to invest in everything, and I'm curious if it's going to. And you know, look, talk is cheap. Like I said, you have calling you left and right, promising you the moon, but on something this small, I'm not. I swear, I, I'm not going to change your life. At least I hope I don't. But you judge me. All I do ask, when you are more liquid, we get a chance to know each other, then maybe we can work on something bigger down the road. Okay? $6,500 is really big right now. I don't, I'm not even in the, in the ballpark with that. So. Yeah, no, I see what I'm, you're saying. Do this at least. What's that? Grab a pen and paper. At least you could jot down my information this time. Yeah. Let me know I'm when you're just, ready. I'm just not in a position to do anything right now. Yeah, hey, look, no worries. And at the end of the day... Like I said, I know you are, and I can go on and on as to why this will work out. But um, look, before I even go further, I just wanted to jot down my information this time. Just let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Right. You have a pen and paper in hand. Yes. All right. Again, my name is Jonathan Miller. And in parentheses, okay. I want you to write uh, the greatest of all time. All right. No, that's 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 Tom Brady. All right, he's a goat. Enough. He's a goat. That that's Eli Manning, but okay. No oh, baloney. <laughs> and uh, my company again, as you know. Yep. And my direct line, you can reach me anytime. And look, I understand there's a, there's a liquidity issue. I can honestly care less about the money. Uh, what I suggest is this, and we gradually grow this relationship after meeting face-to-face, -face, and maybe we can work on something bigger and better the next time out. Okay? What, you're going to come out to Arizona or something or uh, down to Colorado? To meet you? How about this? you got to yeah. make me a promise, okay? No. L Go <laughs> ahead. Listen Humor me, though. No, this is true. I'll hold you to this. When this works out, we meet up face-to-face. -face, I take you out for a steak dinner. Uh, shake my hand, give me a hug, and maybe even a big fat kiss on the cheek, if I'm lucky. No, it ain't happening. All right, fair enough. Uh, maybe a kiss through the phone. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think... Okay, good. Watch this. When I outperform them, you can come here to New York, sit on my lap. No, I ain't. I'm not coming to New York. The first thing that pops up will excite you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, look, Tom, I don't want to um, hold you up too long. So how the process works, I had a UPS with all my information. No, I don't have any money to throw at the wall right now. 
Yeah, look, I see what you're saying. I know liquidity is an issue. Let me ask you this. If I gave you a week to fund $1,500... Hey, listen, I could write a check for $1,500, but I'm not going to. No, I, I get it. Trust me. And that's my point. Because you don't know who I am yet. But I promise yeah, but you... you don't understand the I, I'm not going to part. Of, co of course I, I... Because you know what? We'll build this account at your pace... If that's fine, you know, I'll go as slow as it takes to make you feel comfortable with me. Next time out, take me a little more seriously, step by step. That's it. When, when this one does work out, I want you to call me up, say, John, you persistent, ugly bastard, I love you. Let's do it again. No. <laughs> Uh, persistent, funny, maybe. I don't know about the ugly, but... I appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm trying to see here if I've got $1,500 anywhere. Okay, humor me. All right, and I appreciate the vote of confidence. Do you want to set the account up in your name or the name of your business? All right, so look, right away, he was so certain he wouldn't buy anything. He even convinced me. In this case, what you have to do is shrink your mind as small as possible to not think and do what you're trained to do, which is rebuttals, rebuttals, rebuttals. So as you see, once he said no, I just quickly reminded him we spoke before. And in this case, I give him a reference point of our past conversation, just showing him that I'm not a total stranger and um, there's somewhat familiarity to, to allow me to keep going forward. So something you wanna do 100 billion percent of the time is, anytime you get an objection, before you give your rebuttal, you wanna give a control blurb. And a control blurb is pretty much responding with empathy, and that's connecting with them. For example, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, or I hear you, or that makes sense. Then you continue with your, your rebuttal. Now, after each rebuttal, you always want to finish with the close, which is asking for the order. And you want to continue doing this over and over. And eventually, you'll hear your prospect kind of break down into saying yes. So eventually, after saying no and no over and over, I eventually told them to grab a pen and paper and jot down my information. The reason I did this psychologically, it builds a sense of presence, almost as if I'm there. They have my name. They have my number. They have my company's name or my personal information. So it helps them kind of open up a bit and give more information. All right, let me just say this. So a lot of times I'll throw in jokes just to lighten up a conversation. So as you see, this is an older guy, very intense, very stern on saying no. And when I throw in jokes like give me a big fat kiss on the cheek or sit on my lap, I don't really mean it. I'll never do that. And I, I didn't do it. But um, I, I didn't do that with him. All right. But uh, the point is, it lightens the conversation so much. No one else speaks like that. It totally deflates any tension out of the air. And they become relaxed. And when they're relaxed, it's easy to sell anything to anyone. But look, even after doing that, he still said no. But he said no in, in a whining manner. So I knew he was breaking down. I knew he was having fun with the situation. And I knew saying yes was right around the corner. Eventually, as you see, my corny jokes, um, they worked. He pretty much broke down. He called me funny. Right then and there, I knew I had him. So I stayed quiet, putting pressure on his decision until he said pretty much okay. Again, I hope you loved this amazing content. Like and subscribe. Again, for anyone looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, for group coaching on how to close deals over the phone, we'll teach you every single thing we learned on Wall Street, everything in this video, all in one course. And without overselling it, I think you're gonna do a hell of a job closing sales moving forward. Again. Info at bigtimecloser.com or you can contact us at bigtimecloser.com. The link's below. See you guys soon.